Destiny Rising, a Destiny mobile game, is now playable in early testing. But is it any good? Today we break down the pros and cons of this new Destiny experience. The gameplay and unique missions, patrolling with NPCs and some great locations. Also some of the negatives that do unfortunately include loot boxes. Let's take a look. And now, the enemies of humanity are growing stronger. We need heroes more than ever. So in case you didn't know, yesterday marked the beginning of Destiny Rising's closed alpha test. Destiny Rising is a mobile game developed by NetEase under license from Bungie, so Bungie is not making this game into a completely different company. The testing goes from November 1st to December 5th, so just over a month to test out the game. And of course, this is in the alpha stages, so very early on. Before we speak more about the gameplay and things like that, what's available in this closed alpha? If you did sign up and get the chance to get in, you can take part in the prologue of the main story's campaign. They don't want to spoil too much just yet. There's 11 different light bearers to add to your roster of playable characters. You can check out the Haven social space in the Jiangxi Metro free roam destination. Two Haven Ops strike missions, three public events, Gauntlet, a six player raid like experience and all new modes that include Morgren's Prey, The Realm of the Nine, Legacy, and Shifting Gates. There's also some casual activities to take part in between missions and more to discover. I think there was some type of card game in the menus too. So let's begin by talking about the gameplay of Destiny Rising. And this may be surprising to some, but it actually does feel like a Destiny game. You have familiar weapon sounds, firing and footsteps, and when rewards and items drop, it'll play the exotic sound. You start in a basic tutorial mission where your ghost resurrects you and you learn the controls and basics of the world. There's also some customization options to change your guardian's voice and how they look. The game does feel like a Destiny shooter. You can switch between first and third person modes, which is kind of cool. There's a ping system, which is nice. The main game should have this. A chat, emote, sparrows, quests, and rewards. Story-wise, it is worth noting that this is set in an alternate timeline during the Dark Age after the Collapse. So whatever happens in Rising isn't necessarily considered canon to the main Destiny universe. But on that note, it does seem to stick pretty close to the lore we know so far, which is nice. There are a bunch of new additions though, like a giant sentinel that patrols the lands and guards Haven. The Iron Lord Radagast and other Iron Lords who lead this early version of the city. Or a confrontation with Crota and his sisters when introducing the Hive, which of course it happens in Destiny one way later, but it's still fun. The in-game settings offer great customization and frame rates for a game, especially in an alpha stage. My early gameplay from yesterday was a little bit lower frame rate, but as I patrol the metro here and do quests, it's set to ultra and in performance mode. You can use the mobile controls or hook up a controller via Bluetooth and it works great. I have noticed in the alpha though, some buttons for controller don't seem to work fully, so you'd have to tap on your phone every once in a while, but the gameplay works fine. There are many different weapons with unique perks just like you'd expect. Some returning ones of course, exotics like the Risk Runner. And at the armor you can upgrade and enhance weapons even further. The game even has a new rarity above exotic called Mythic Weapons. It's gonna blow! Watch out, Wolf! The Fallen are like scourging pests, gnawing away at once thriving cities one after another. I'll make sure they fail this time. It's Iwela! Such finesse!
Impressive. It's not over yet. I must go take her down. Watch my back, young wolf. She's there. We must take her down this time before she can invade. <laughs> I am Iranuk, sister of the great Grota. You did it! She's gone! Wait! The room seems to be transmitting something, Akora. the right to hear my words before you die. Ikora, the portal is collapsing. Get us out of here. Existence is the struggle to exist. Uranuk's failure denotes a lack of strength. I lack nothing as a reward for your insolence. I will crush your light and devour your home. Thank you. What did you find inside? An army of the darkness. Enemies who don't fear the light, they hunger for it. Let's talk about characters and their abilities. The game is centered around the guardians you play as. You first start as a character called Wolf being resurrected by your ghost, but meet more guardians as you progress and you can add them to your fire team roster. Characters like Kabir and Ikora. Currently in the alpha, this is how it works. You meet a couple and add them to your roster. But if you want to unlock more playable characters, you have to go to the Fender Pandora, which of course is a typical mobile game fashion loot box system. You can spend what's called a Bon Voyage charm, we'll call it the boat currency, to open a loot box, and you have a chance to get a character or a skin, along with a bunch of other smaller items like currencies and so on. As you can see on the right side, once you open a specific amount, you are guaranteed a mythic character, which is the highest rarity. Of course, you can buy more of this boat currency with real money, or you can earn what's called Lumio Leaves out in the world. You get these from Daily Quests, Bounties, Realm of the Nine, The Expanse, Calamity Ops, and some other things. So technically, you can get these items for free by opening boxes, but you'll likely need to convert a lot of leaves in order to turn them into the boats needed to open the boxes. So they're sort of banking on the fact that players would rather pull out their wallet and buy more boats compared to earning the Lumia leaves. Now this isn't really anything surprising. We knew a free game like this was going to employ tactics like this to make money. It's not too bad currently the way I see it, but it could change for launch. Many mobile games have done this to get players in the door. Players can also buy cosmetics just like you can in Destiny 2. Ghosts, sparrows, emotes, character skins, so on. The option currently isn't available, but you can see where it would be able to be purchased. Let's talk about some weird or more negative aspects to the game too. At times, there is AI voices. For example, you have what sounds like the voices of characters like the Armory NPC and Ikora that speak to you normally, and then some of their next lines right after that are AI and sound completely different. Ah, the new light bearer. I've never seen Lord Radagast pay so much attention to a fresh recruit. The name's Bazinet, your local gunsmith. Nice to meet you. Most guns have their particular perks. You ever hear of Basak Poker? There's all sorts of cards. Draw a hand, play them together, then boom! Chemical reactions, pow! Ikora Ray. There's no time left. Meet me in the Icefield Cavern, Wolf. I want you to see it with your own eyes.
My first thought that this was placeholder and it seems to be the case as NetEase has said this. We're thrilled by the positive reception we've seen so far for the game and we look forward to the feedback you'll be able to share with us over the duration of the testing. We've noticed some have been a little confused over the placeholder AI generated voiceovers in the community testing build of the game, so we want to help clarify that topic. These are indeed placeholders and will be changed in the final build of the game. This is still a very early build of the game, so please excuse our dust. Next to that, another confusing part of the game for me is all of the items and materials you can earn. Sometimes that's what has thrown me off from mobile games in the past. You load it up and it's like, here, you can upgrade this, use this currency, do this now, do this. And after playing through it for several hours, I still don't know how some of these systems work. Maybe this is to confuse the player, make them focus on some of the main currencies maybe you have to buy, but in typical Destiny fashion, the New Light experience is a little confusing. This game does offer a lot though. We'll see how NetEase plans to keep players in-game. We know that's no easy task. They do seem to have a lot of activities, missions, gauntlet, new modes, and even PvP planned. Hopefully they can keep up with the live aspect of the game like Bungie has for so long. The only hope is that the monetization part of it doesn't take over. We knew this was going to be a part of the game one way or another. This wasn't going to be completely free. They need to make money somehow. But let's hope that it doesn't impact the game fully with pay-to-win aspects. It doesn't seem too bad for now. Yes, you can use real money to buy characters, but each character you currently have has different abilities and it's not like a new one is going to be, you know, 100 times better. You can get by by using Wolf if you wanted to. It doesn't seem too bad for now, it still sucks to have loot boxes obviously, but it could get worse, we'll see upon release. From what was playable in this early alpha build though, I'd say Destiny Rising is a fun Destiny experience worth the download. Even just to try it for a bit, shoot some aliens, explore some of ruined earth. At the current moment, it seems you can just play Wolf if you wanted to through the whole story. You will be able to try out other characters in certain missions like Ikora to unlock them, but I don't see any downside to at least giving it a try. We'll see how everything turns out with the full game though. Anyway Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. If you've played Destiny Rising, let us know in the comments down below how you feel about it. And if you haven't, will you be giving it a try in the future? If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore, news, and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.